Yo, Shalom. All praises to the Mosah. Yeho, Yehoshua, this is Sounds from YYBY. 46 features that Studio One has, Reason Can't Do. I'm not about to go in detail, you know, to show you exactly what they are. I'm going to just tell you what they are and you just go find out, you know, if they got them. Hell, nine times out of ten, most of y'all already know, you know, what they are anyway. But sometimes we don't realize that what one can do, what the other can't do. All right, so now, the first thing I want to talk about is that, uh, well, for, hold on. First of all, keep in mind, it's not about how many features the doll have, has or whatever. It's about what you need, period. The first feature I want to talk about is called, you know, wheel uh, perimeters. When you got a mouse with, wheel, with, a wheel, with a roller wheel on there, in Studio One, you can roll the wheel, you can move the mouses, you can move the perimeters, you can move any knobs, you can move anything on there with the mouse. That comes in handy. It might sound crazy to you, but I actually like it. It comes in handy, man. Uh, type in decimals. What is that? You can be precise with your decimals. Type in precise numbers of decimals. You know, on the plugins, on uh, the volume levels, type in precise dec decimals. FX event. You can put an effect on a specific part that you cut. You don't have to do no automation. You have to do none of that. FX event. Go look that up if you don't know about it. So you can you can have a one track, a bunch of waves. And you can cut a certain piece, drop that plug in specifically on that part, and you can get the effect. You don't got to sit and draw out you know, modulation or anything of that nature. Multi everything. What that mean? You can multitask anything. Drag and drop multitask. Drop drop a whole bunch of plugins on the same track. Solo buttons, pan button, gain button, gain knob, whatever. If you select those specific tracks, you could change anything. You can move anything. You can drop plugins on them, take the plugins off, you know, change the tempo of all those effects. You can multitask almost damn near everything. That helps a lot when you're dealing with large projects, man. Multitasking. Look that up. Track icons. You can put track icons on the tracks. Now, Reason has where well, you can see the instruments, right? But it, do it doesn't show you. You don't have icons of what type of instrument. Let me change it. Say it in a different way. It, it shows the VST, the plugin. Of you know what you're using, but it, it doesn't show the icon of that specific instrument, you know. So inside of uh Studio One, you can do that. Arranger track, uh, Reason has something called the block, but in Ranger track, whatever is under that arranger that you select, you can grab it and move it, and it would take everything with it perfectly. It would take everything with it that's under that arranger track. So once you got a wave, you hit arranger, add arranger at the top. You move that arranger, slide it, copy it down to another place. And it'll take everything with it. Um, scratch pad. Just exactly what it is. Anything that you could think of. If you don't want to mess up what you already have, you can go open up the scratch pad and you get the scratching. Scratching pads, creating different formats. So, for example, if you got verse, hook, verse, hook, you can go in the scratch pad and put hook, verse, hook, verse. And so if, you, if you're dealing with indecisive people who want a different vibe, you don't got to worry about messing up the first what you got. You could do a second one that comes in handy with your own work. If you're indecisive weirdo with the music and everything, you, you can't make up your damn mind how much how, how you want to make the beat. And, and, and uh, you can't make up your mind how you want to do the beat. You just got 99 ways that you want to do it. Now you can do all those ways without copying a damn song and uh, and, and making another copy of it. Uh, and, and, you know, and open up each one of them just to hear it. You know, so, you know, yeah, I got a lot of people like that. You know, well, I don't know. I don't I like this one, but I want to I, I don't know which one I want to use. Indecisive people, man. So this helps a lot. Note track. What is that exactly what it is? You got important information that you want to remember. You write notes on it. 
write notes on it. If an artist say, hey, can you add A, B, C, and D on this certain specific part of that music? You write notes on it. So if you go back to it for three days from now, if you forget, you remember. Video editor. Add music to video. Add music to video. Export it out. Sound design. You got a, a dope idea you can put on YouTube. All right. Master an album. Exactly what it is. You can master a whole master a whole serious album on uh Presonus Studio One. Dope. Comes in handy. Strip silence. That take out small unwanted noises, noises of that music. So you can multitask everything of the whole audio file, select the options, tweak it, tweak the options, press the button, and it'll cut all that information out. Now, manual is the, the best way when you do it manually, but that helps a lot. You still got to play it back and listen. Make sure it ain't cut the, you know, the wrong things out. Rupa edit. That means that when you move something, if you got a whole bunch of things already perfect and you move something or you want to replace it with something else, if you move it over, it'll re slide that one over and move that one to the end. It will slide that one over to the end, the beginning, and move that one to the end perfectly. That comes in handy if you want to master your album in the regular view of Studio One compared to going inside the, the master album. That helps when you're dealing with samples when you're making the beat. The tech chords, y'all know what that is. But the difference with the, the tech chords, it actually detect chords. It, don't, it, it doesn't just detect mono and polyphonic sounds. Like if I sing a note, one note, and it detects that. It detects the chords. So any instrumental, any sample that has a chord type sound with different notes in it, it would detect those chords and you could drag and drop those chords to that track. Also, if you're dealing with an audio file and you can get two audio files that playing totally different notes, you can have them playing the same notes, man. Even if they chords crazy. Let's keep going. Lyric track. Exactly what it is. You're producing with an artist. You're producing for artists. Uh, they write their lyrics. You can write the lyrics on the music. You can pop it up on your big screen. And as the music played, the lyrics pops up on the screen. Look up the video. Everything I'm saying, y'all, you can actually go on the internet and, and look at these features and everything. You know, pull it up and all that. So it's called Lyric Track, right? Uh, color Creator, a new feature. You can just change all your colors. Whatever you want your colors to be. You could change them, tweak them, make them soft to the eyes instead of real bright. You know, all that type of stuff. Save it as a preset. All right. Export multiple formats. Meaning that a lot of the time, certain DAWs, you have to export the wave out, then go back, export MP3 out, go back, export FLAC out. Now you can export all those out at the same time. Right. Because wave don't lose quality. MP3 lose quality. You know, such and such. So you can export everything out at the same time. Let's keep going. Uh, metadata. Now all the information is embedded on your music of that MP3. Your mixtape cover is the is the, the new step of the bootleg. Uh, what they call it? The new bootleg of copyright. When they when they play your MP3, your mixtape cover pop up on the thing. You got all the information of the studio who who mixed it, who mastered it, who wrote it. All the information on MP3. Right. So metadata. Reason has that, but it's only if reasons open up the, the that specific song, you know, the original song, the whole logo and data information of that song, then it got some information to pop up. This is when you just export something out. You don't want them to have all your music. You just want them to have the MP3 and you send that. You got all the metadata in there. Auto punch, auto punch, specific, precise, small little parts. That you want to record in right that's what it do when you when you tagging in that's perfect for tagging in instead of creating another track you could you could tag in certain small little spots auto punch is very important man high tracks you got 13 tracks you can you can select those put them in the folder hide those tracks get them out the way you don't got to worry about them no more until you decide to want to bring them back most dogs like reason you got to sit here and, you know uh if you got 13 tracks and you don't want to deal with them, you got to copy another 13 tracks. But all those tracks will be on the mixer. You cannot move them. You cannot hide them. You cannot get rid of them. You cannot demolish them. You know, un unless you want to save another copy of that song. 
right? So you have to, <laughs> you have to, you know, save as, right? So you got two, three th different songs of different mixes, right? Uh, VCA channel. All it is is dope. It's a dope tool. It's simple. You just select all your tracks and you add a VCA channel and that VCA channel would change the volume of those tracks and the volume of those tracks will move up and down with that VCA channel. Just look it up. Everything I'm saying, just look it up, people. Okay, let's keep going. Folder tracks, what I was talking about. You put them in, you put all your track files in the folder, you know, and then after that, you save it, then you hide it, move it out the way. You can do another mix. If you duplicate it, duplicate it, do another mix. So you got a copy of it inside of the same project. Mixer scenes. You got scenes that you can save. You mix it a certain way, save that mixer scene. Mix it a second way, save that mixer scene. Mix it a third way, save that mixer scene. Now you can go back and press each one of them and, and it'll open up, it, it'll go, it'll change that mix. So this is when you're dealing with indecisive people like, yo, you know, I like that mix right there. I like the second mix, but can you go back to the first mix, man? And don't what you sent me and then just tweak this and tweak that and tweak that. You're like, okay, cool. Right? You're dealing with people like that. I deal with people like that all the time. That's why that's very important. Or you might be dealing with your indecisive ass. You don't know what the hell you want. <laughs> you don't know how, how you want to do things. You're like, yeah, I like that mix, but I really don't know. There you go. Mix your scenes. All right. Let's keep going. Um, what, Where we at right now? Where we at? Where we at? Where we at? Fader flip. Fader flip is all fader flip is that you got the console in Studio One. You got the knob to raise the volumes. Now you can use those same volume knobs for the insert volume for the insert value it'll train change it you press a button and it'll change those fader knobs on the console to insert knobs they, they turn green so you can raise the knob the volume of those up to do modulation is it check it up it's called fader flip track presets exactly what it is track presets that's it keep going lock tracks if you got a whole bunch of audio files, you don't want to move them. You don't want to accidentally shift them over to the left or the right. You can grab all those audio files and you can lock them. You can lock them down, right? Clip volume. What that is, instead of cutting each part of the audio and then changing the volume, you can just press V. What I got as a, uh, you know, uh, as a key command, press V, a white line will pop up on the audio you select dot, you put a dot right here, you put a dot right there, and you can raise the volume of that specific location of that audio without even cutting anything. And then you can move that clip, that line out the way, but the information would still be there, right? Uh, fade options, that's it. You got more than one fade option. And reason you got one fade option is just like that. You got curves, you got all type of things you could do, whatever, to come up with crazy ideas to help fade everything else so to get rid of those pops okay bend to uh the different reason has a bend to and bend to what that is is that you know it, it grabs that sample and and put a line on each one of those parts of that sample so you can quantize to make that sample fit exactly perfectly for that tempo but the difference with studio one it has more features okay it has more features for that it's called bend to render instruments you got instruments taking CPU power. You can render them, change it to audio. You can render them, hide the instruments. It got a lot of features that you can save CPU information. And you can also reverse it and bring all the information back. Pen documents. If you open up your file in Reason, at the bottom, it got like five options, five songs that you see. And every song you open up, it'll move those songs. In Studio One, it has the date. It has all the songs that you open up and when you open them up. What happens is that every time you open a new song up, the other songs drop down, right? So you might be working on stuff that you forget because you got so much music. But if you pin it, now you got them at the top. They never go nowhere. So you can always remember like, okay, this is what I got to work on. That one I got to work on. That one I got to work on. They all pin to the top of the file information and there's a whole bunch of stuff that, that, that that's right there right news feed y'all know the news feed on the side of studio one right there on the right side they bring you all the information to from their world 
They don't wait for you to go find it. They bring it to you. New updates, new ways to use the dog. Anything you can think of, they bring the information to you. Every other dog, you got to go find the information. You got to be like, oh, I ain't know about that. You know about it late. No, they're going to sell the information to you. They're going to bring everything to you. You in their world, which is dope because I be wanting to know what's going on about the dog. New updates or whatever it is and, you know, new features or how to use a certain thing. So the information is right there. You just click on it, go straight to the video. Audio batch converter. That's an extra thing that I bought from Presona's website. And it hangs on the left. Once you buy it, download it, it's on the left side of the dog. What it is is that it's, it's, you open it up. If somebody sends you 100 tracks, you can convert them just like that. You can convert them to any format real quick. It converts very quick when you're dealing with formats that's not the right format, right? That's what audio converter is. Because sometimes, a lot of the times, you have to use another, um, another software to do all that type of stuff, man. Uh, notation You make some music You want the band to play it You print the notes out You want the orchestra to play it You print the notes out As you make music Studio One is creating notation of it automatically man. And you can go to it You can see it It's a sheet with all the notes Half of us don't, don't, don't know how to read no damn notes anyway I, I, I know a little bit of it But you know but the, the, the beautiful thing, you got people out there who specialize in that. That's what they do. They read the notes and they play your music. Hell, they might play it better than you sometimes. And right, let's keep going. Uh, create shortcuts. Oh, shortcuts. Wow, you can shortcut anything. Shortcut to your keyboard, shortcut to your, key, your, your other keyboard, your MIDI keyboard. Shortcut anything. Change anything to your liking or whatever it is. And also, you can bring different dolls shortcuts inside of studio one cubase reaper pro tools sleeper logic whatever it is you could bring all those workflows inside just you know you might be a person who just moved over to studio one and you're still in your bag trying to do all your work you know uh expecting it to work like dad going pro tools or some shit like that y'all be bugging out so to just learn how the doll workflow work, you know, if you want to just work, have the same workflow from Pro Tools inside Studio One, then take your ass back to Studio Pro Tools, you know, like, like just learn the workflow so you can see what you're working with. But I get it, though. You know, you're trying to get stuff done. All right. Let, um, export flack. Why I say export flack? Because export flack is the quality of wave, but have the features of MP3 when you're dealing with metadata. And it's less volume. It's less volume. It's dope. Comes in handy. Flack is the new thing. Ask for it. Hell, even a lot of the platforms allow you to load Flack up on the internet, man. Did y'all know that? Yeah, Flack is crazy, man. That, that that might be the new thing. Because when you export Wave out, Wave is a, a bigger... It's like 30, sometimes it's 20, 30, 40 megabytes based on how big the music is. MP3 shrink it very small. That's why you can send more stuff out MP3 at one time through an email. But if you if you export out Wave, you got to go through Google Drive or whatever Mac has. But flat, a little smaller like MP3, but carry the same quality as Wave, right? So play at song tempo. So you're making the beat, all the audio files in your browser. You press the button at the bottom, play song tempo. And as you play the beat, all those audio files that you're going through in the menu will play in loop and play the tempo of your beat that you're creating. Why is this great? Because it helps give you ideas that you thought wouldn't fit with your music. Instead of getting it, drag it, drop it in, time stretch it, play it. Now, I don't like it, take it out, get another sample, drag it, drop it in, play it. I don't like it. Get another sample, drag it, drop it in, time stretch it, play it. I don't like it. But if you're going through the browser menu, you're gonna you don't have to do all that. It'll play the it'll loop the tempo to the music, man. Sound hashtags. Studio One has hashtags, but you can't create your own new hashtags. That's what they gotta do. But at least they have hashtags of different feelings of music and ideas. Now this is the pro this is the con of this 
when you're dealing with your own third party sounds, your own folders of sounds, it doesn't have hashtags for that, right? But the great thing about it, when you buy sounds and samples and kits on Presonus platform website, and they have a lot of dope stuff on there, which I bought over the years, when you download that information, those hashtags work with all those sounds and samples perfectly. That's what I'm saying. So eventually they might add the, uh, well, you can create your own you know, hashtags for, you know, your outside samples and everything. But cool. At least you have that though, bro, for right now. Metronome options, different styles of metronome. This is important when you're dealing with people who like a, have a dis different rhythm, different rhythms. Hell, I change it up sometimes. You know, you might be like, Pum. You know, sometimes some people like like so based on the rhythm it allows you to play a certain way people don't understand how important that is so now he's like or it might go like you get what I'm saying? So metronome options is very important, man. Especially with those who are able to dance and they have different rhythms. So you're dealing with reggae, reggae tone, stuff like that. You hear me? All right. So now macros for dog. Y'all know what that is the macros on top of Studio One that you can create, and each macro has a precise thing. Like for example, they have a macro called Reverse Reverb. Now, anybody know about that, right? The process of doing a reverse reverb, you had to copy huh, that, you know, that that sample and put it on another track, and then you had to reverse it, then you got to add the effect on there, tweak the effect, and blah, 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 do all the other stuff. But if you just drop that effect, that sample at the bottom, press the button reverse reverb, it'll do everything for you. Sound dope every time, yo. Sound dope every time. So that's different things you can do in the macros, man. Customize options editor. That means that everything that's on the door of the GUI, you can move that you don't want it to be there. If it's if it's if you don't use that feature or that option, you can remove that feature out the way so your dog can look more clean to you. Auto save. Every dog got auto save, but in Studio One, uh, when it crashes, it crashes a damn lot. I'll tell you that. Uh, but when it crash, when you open it back up, it'll pop up a menu and you got oh so many options, man, to select or not select. So you can find out what the problem with your dog was causing the problem, right? Cause a lot of the times it'd be third party plugins that causing the issues, you know, with your dog while it's crashing, man. Cause you know, I got videos. i talk about this all the time. So, and when you're dealing with a dog like studio one, um, you know, sometimes you want third party plugins, even if you don't want to use them because they don't provide a lot of crazy plugins like how Cubase has look up Cubase or logic, but they do have a decent enough of plugins. Hell, they just added a vocoder. You get what I'm saying? Like they don't even have their own stock of the auto tune. This is my point. You have to, I had to buy the auto tune plugins. So it's a lot of other plugins that DAWs have that Studio One doesn't. So that's why people have to go run to third party plugins, which is fine. You know, do what you do. But so that's very important. Um, backup and archive. You back up your music on a whole nother level. Check that out. It's called backup and archive. Marker track. You can put a markers on each important part of the music. Identify what's what. You add markers and you can name those markers. They look like flags. Different boom, boom, boom. What I was doing in reason, what I would do in reasons, I would add a, like a little small block piece right there. But the markers is way better, more understanding, and you can remove the marker track out the way. Create plugin folders. So every plugin that you have, you can create and organize your own folders. Yes, you can shift them around, even the stock or the third party. You can shift them around. You know what? I don't want my EQ to be in that folder. I'll put my EQ in this folder and create that folder and name it my damn plugins. You know, you, <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Whatever you want to be anal with, you can do that. Retrospective recording. 
That means that it thinks for you. Everything you play without recording, you were just practicing. You know, before you record, it, re it, it grabbed the information for you. So you might you might not be good enough to go back and play what you re that you play. You like, damn, that sound great. But I didn't press record. But guess what? Retro perspective recording already have the information. You just got to open it up and boom, copy that piece and build your music around it. Last, but check this out. So all the Pro Tools people out here, man. Pro Tools this, Pro Tools that. Yeah, Pro Tools is dope when it comes to mixing and mastering. Don't get it twisted. But for everybody feel like you just have to have Pro Tools because it's industry standard. Yo, check this shit out, man. I've been doing this for a long time, man. Studio One, Cubase, dolls like that, they can read those formats, man. All you have to do is export the, the, the format of, of Pro Tools out and Studio One will open it up. You see all the editing, all the stuff that you did. Now, but when it comes to the plugins, right, it won't have your plugins because if, if their daughter don't have those plugins, it, I mean, that's certain, you know, of course it won't have that because everybody don't have the same plugins. Everybody don't use the same plugins. Everybody use different things based on if you're dealing with Mac or PC. Keep that in mind, right? Because you got different styles of plugins and everything. Everybody don't use the same thing. But as far as the editing part, what you cut, what you move, what you shift, all those things, it opens it up. And also, you can send that information so Pro Tools can open it up. That's it. Check this information out. If you got any opinions, drop it down at the bottom. This is YYBY. Peace.